Thirty. 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 Thirty.
Okay, so as soon as answers start coming in, there are some seconds delay. Okay. Our answers answer. are already coming answers in. Answers coming in. Some are correct. Already? That's good. Some are very imaginative. Of course, we're not going to give you the answers. We're going to publish the answers right now because that would give the game away and we'll be giving you the answer. Which I remind you that in these live events, you don't see what you're typing. We have to publish it for you to see. Of course, as Vic said, we're not going to publish them yet. We come to our feature of today, which is called What a Good Idea. What ideas are these? And why are we presenting as our first picture? A wasp on a nest. Didn't we do that last week? No, we're not talking about nests. What we're going to talk about is how people got ideas from nature. Do you remember when we talked about wasps and how they make their nest? This wasp there is nibbling wood and then it chews it, mixes it with saliva, with water it drinks, it makes a lovely paste and it turns it into paper. And you can see this photo here, very good photo, close up. Ooh, what a lovely picture that is. Indeed. And, and you see all the details of that lovely face. See those eyes, sorry. How <laughs> focused they are on the, their job. You can see their mouths forming those lovely hexagons to build the nest. And if you see the edges, doesn't it look exactly like a piece of paper or a cardboard that's torn when you tear it? You can see how it's really made of paper. And if you remember also from last week, it was the Chinese who came up with paper, who invented paper for the first time. There was this uh, Mandarin called Tsai Lung, and he looked at wasps building and he thought, and he thought, hmm, that's a good idea. I wonder if we can do something similar. Mm -hmm. But of course, we do things in factories. So do people um, chew the wood in the factories to make this paper? Seriously, you think factories are full of people, millions of people chewing wood? Well, I can imagine it. But I don't think it's very realistic, <laughs> is it? Absolutely not. In fact, we have machines. So this is how we do it. We grow forests. In Europe, for example, we grow forests specially for paper making. The logs are cut and cleaned and stripped taken over to the factory where they have these big, big machines with a lot of blades like that, that cut up the wood and tear it into shreds until it's almost like dust. Then the dust is poured into another container where water is coming in. So on the left side, you can see the wood chips coming in and on the right side, water. It's mixed and mixed and mixed until it becomes like a soupy mass, um, a paste. This space is then taken to another machine. It is laid out flat and thin in big sheets. And then at the other end, rolls of paper come out. I and still prefer chewing wood though. Definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely. I look forward to the paper you're going to make for me. I'm going to make some paper the way wasps make it, by chewing wood. Okay, making it by looking forward to a notebook of it. Having breakfast on it. And I won't share it with you. I think it's time to move on to another subject before he gets more funny ideas. Oh, look what we have here. Aren't they cute? Bunnies. Love them. Bunnies. And you see that these rabbits are... I mean, actually, if a rabbit stopped moving, you wouldn't... This is a baby one here. Oh, it's a baby. Yes. Oh, look at this here, so small they are. And this and, is and also another it. baby. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. You took these photos, right? So you, you've well, actually not seen all of them. not all of them. You actually seen these animals. Yes. And I I noticed one thing that when these animals stand still, you don't notice them. And you know why that is? Can you guess? It's camouflage. Have you heard of that? I'm sure you have. Camouflage is when an animal is exactly the same color as the background. In this case, rabbits are eaten by predators, so it needs to be the same color. But here, we're seeing a predator that's the same color. There's a spider called a crab spider because of the way it keeps its arms. And it's waiting on a yellow flower because it's yellow. When a poor insect comes in and lands for the pollen and nectar, 
it gets grabbed because it didn't see the spider. Of course, the spider is doing nothing wrong. That's what it eats, the same way that we eat, all living things eat. This animal, there's an animal here, and it takes a while to notice. I only see sticks there. Indeed. But sticks, sticks, aha, uh -huh, what's that? Ooh, it's a grasshopper. It's there. a grasshopper. Good and thing that's the yellow outline, or I wouldn't have spotted it, I think. And that's exactly what grasshoppers do. They are the same color as the sticks and grass that they stay among, so that the predator doesn't see them. Because, yeah. let's, let's face it, they are delicious, aren't they? Mm. Well, I wouldn't know because I'm vegetarian, so. So am I. Quite true. And here we have the same kind of background, but this time it's a predator. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Ooh, I've seen it, yes. There. Oh my God. And it takes you a bit of time to notice, and it's only because you know. If you were just passing by, you just wouldn't tell, would you? And see there. Yeah, there you see it's a it's... lovely wolf spider. Do you think it's going to chew wood as well? Sorry. <laughs> The way its arms are tells me that it's ready to grab because sometimes you can tell um, you can tell things by looking at an animal and this one tells me that it's waiting to grab and that's why it's camouflage. Well, what has this got to do with us today? But before we answer that question, here's another habitat and camouflage in the sea. Wow, that's an octopus there. And I only saw it because it started moving. I love the way she uses those tentacles to feel her way in front before yes. going there, right? Can you see all the little tufts on its on its skin? It does that on purpose, like this scorpion fish, all those little tufts to look like the grass around yeah, it. Yeah, they help her to blend. And here's a cuttlefish that can change colors in a second. Right now it's all blotchy and marks and it's going dark. You think it's a swimming rock? <laughs> yes, if it were still, I wouldn't yeah, have seen it. Yeah, that's the whole point. No? Indeed. Okay. Oh. Right. And what have humans taken from it? Well, camouflage, of course. We all know that the, 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 the people who use camouflage most are soldiers. They need to, right? They need to keep safe. So they need to match with their background, like these three soldiers here. What do you think? Um, hmm, something's wrong. There's something wrong. You something. put them all oh, in the wrong no. place. Oh no, I can't change it now. Can you help us, guys? Uh, I, I mean, I can definitely see the, 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 the mean, green. What's that snowman doing in the, <laughs> the middle forest. of the forest there? That, that's going to that's gonna show everybody that he's there. Yes, Opposite of effect. Wait a minute, let's, let's see. Try, let's, let's try again, let's try again. Let's try again. Uh, this is, oh uh, no, no, no. no. No, no, oh, no. no. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, maybe he's trying to look the guy on the right. Maybe he's trying to look like one of the trees there in the background. Oh, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. no. To stick out. Let's try again. Let's try again. Third time lucky. Let's this see. Soldier is crazy. Ha. Ah, ha. brown ha. against brown. He looks like a lump of soil there. And that guy yeah. in the middle, if he weren't smiling, <laughs> I don't think I'd spot him. And the snowman uh, in the snow. That's it's not a snowman, right. it's a soldier. That's right. So camouflage means you have to look like your background and it's not just color, it's also shape. That's why the guy in the middle has leaves on his head because you don't want a sharp outline and all these little tricks that we learned from animals. And on to our next story. Is this camouflage? No, we're showing you something else here. This is a cat and it's night, but there's two very bright things as though its eyes came from some science fiction movie, mm. like it's going to throw rays of light and do something. It's actually, those eyes are reflecting light, eh? but their eyes are so sensitive that every little bit of light, it gets reflected. And that's why we see cat's eyes shining in the night. Right. And other animals who hunt at night, like wolves. Of course. Yeah, well, not in Malta, I don't get, get wolves here, but Yes, their eyes shine as well. So that because, tells me that, yeah. yeah because yeah. they need to see in the dark. Exactly. And that helps them. Exactly. So, how did humans take an idea from that? There was this guy quite a while ago. He was His name was Percy Shaw. And he was an Englishman. And you can tell from the car that it's quite a while ago. And he was, he was passing through this uh, mountainside road by car. And it was a misty evening, so it was getting dark and because of the mist, he couldn't see really where the road was. 
And uh, he knew that this uh, road was rather dangerous. And at one time, he nearly came off and right over the edge. But lucky for Percy Shaw and for us, he saw two bright pinpricks of light shining when the car's headlamps got close to them. It was a cat on a wall just at the edge of the cliff. Now he knew that there was a wall at the edge of the cliff and he realized that there was a cat. So Percy Shaw, lucky he's, he, he didn't go over the edge, he started thinking, hmm, that's something very, very useful there. He started thinking and he created these little things that we put today in the middle of the road. Mm, yes, yes, of course, they're familiar. People who drive know what these things are. When the car approaches, they light up with the car's headlamps. As the car goes by, they switch off. They're not actually switching, it, they are reflecting. In fact, when the car has passed, it's totally dark, just like a cat's eyes that pick up light only when there is light reflecting on them. You know the cool thing about cat's eyes? They don't waste electricity. So in country roads, they're perfect because mm -hmm. you don't need lamps on all the time, right? Yes, you get lamps on, switched on, and nobody using the road. It's sort of a waste of electricity, isn't it? But this is such a great idea because they light up exactly when you need them. Exactly. And this is what the first of these things uh, looked like. Guess what they're called? Guess what they're called? Uh, cat's eyes? Exactly, cat's eyes. And, and what's that ant there? Oh, that ant is just to show you how small they actually are. You know, the size of an ant. Mm. These things are not big at all. They don't need to be big. Yeah, they're like studs in the middle of the road. Exactly. Perfect. Although it looks a bit like a robot coming out from the ground there. What, what <laughs> Better move on. He's starting to imagine things. Right. Our next story comes from this man called Georges de Mestral. He, wow. uh, he was a Swiss engineer and he used to take his dog out for a walk. Every time he got back home, he had to remove these little things off the dog's fur. Because he was an engineer, engineers like to look at things and think how they are made and how they work. He noticed that they are actually seeds. These seeds have little hooks and they do that to stick to animals' fur, because that way the animal carries them somewhere else, they drop off somewhere else, and the plant has taken its seeds far and wide. And, well, he started thinking, and he thought, can I invent something that sticks as well as these little seeds? I'm sure it has happened to you. Have you ever walked through the countryside and got them all over your socks? Oh yes, and they take hours to remove sometimes. Exactly. They stick so well, it's like they're hooked in. And that's exactly what Georges de Mestral realized. Mm, yes. So he started experimenting until he created something like this, with hooks on one side, like the seed, and a fur hairy like substance stuff at the bottom, like uh, like an animal's like fur. Oh, wow, like Do you that. know what it is? Velcro. Velcro, there it is. There's a photo there, an enlarged photo there. It's something everybody uses today, you know? <laughs> we use it so much, and here's an example. Hmm. That's me there. Well, you're poor, actually. A bit of me. And there's the hooks at the bottom. Can you see the bit that's in focus there? It's mm. all hooks. And the furry part is at the top and I didn't have to use laces. Yeah, yeah. There. Good thing you changed your socks. I would, wouldn't I, being filmed? Now, here's our next inspiration, idea from nature. This is a gecko. Did you recognize it? If you did, then you know that geckos climb up walls and they can even stay upside down on a ceiling. How do they do it? Do they have Velcro? No, but they do have something special on those feet. It's not hooks, but it is hairs so fine, so thin and so many of them that they stick into the 
little cracks and pores and holes that there is on everything. These are really tiny. We're talking microscope tiny. And when humans realized this, they thought, how is a gecko doing? How is a gecko doing it? And they used to think, in fact, that geckos did it because they had suction. But it wasn't suction. It was these tiny hairs. And people and scientists kept experimenting until today they invented tape. One centimeter of tape, you can see against a fingernail how small one centimeter is, of this gecko tape can hold a kilogram of weight. That's a very small surface area there. It's a very small bit yeah. to be hanging something as heavy as a kilo. That could be very useful, no? Very useful. It's very strong tape. Yeah. And they are still experimenting, mind you. It's not easy, but nature does it first. What do we have here? Ah, our next subject. Our next idea. Ooh, these are these are gulls. They're gulls and they're at Salina because all our photos and films are from Malta. And when you see birds flying, humans have always, people have always done this, that they want to be like them, mm. flying, I mean, come on, we're so heavy, how can we do it? These are drawings that Leonardo da Vinci made. You may have heard of him, famous yeah, inventor, he was a genius. genius. But he never managed to invent never a managed. flying machine no. that really works. He tried wings, he tried a propeller, like a helicopter sort of thing. He didn't manage it. Oh, hang on, sorry, somehow I went back, but Two brothers called Wilbur and Orville, their surname was, <laughs> guess what, Wright. You're not wrong. They got it right. <laughs> you got it right there. <laughs> You're confusing me now. You're right, it's a right, right, wrong, wrong, right, wrong. <laughs> All right. In 1903, they were studying birds and they looked at pigeons and the way pigeons fly and they realized that it's not just about having wings, but it's about the way the wings flap and turn and the way, more important, the air passes over and under, lifting. And finally, in 1903, that's over a hundred years ago, they invented the first plane that worked. People had been trying and crashing before, some people probably died as well, but Wilbur and Orville Wright got it right. Hooray! Hooray! This is a bit bigger. This is much bigger and these are the planes that we have today. Mm. Was and that a dragonfly that landed on its tail there? It's not. It's actually the size of the first plane. It's that. Oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> they have grown since then, no? Mm. Very much so. And thanks to this invention and thanks ultimately to birds, here are some more very fast flying planes. But however we design our planes and however fast they get, ultimately nature does it better and naturally. Wow, those are called turnstones and they were photographed maybe a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I think so because it's is. migration now, as we yes. told you in the first live event. It's a lovely bunch, yeah. Beautiful, it's a beautiful, beautiful pattern bird. on that back. Yes. Wow. They want me to write, they make me want to write poetry. <laughs> and poetry, art, and the nice things we do when we want to relax and we get inspired is our next idea from nature. Because people don't just use things and work, but they also relax and create. And what better than nature to get ideas from? This is called, this is a plant and it's called, funny name, Bear's Breeches. And it has that lovely shape. So let me tell you a story. There was a guy, a sculptor in ancient Greece. This is a legend. And he was once in a cemetery. And he saw this grave of a child. A child had died and it was the tradition that when a child dies, they put a basket with toys. And of course they covered it, they put a slab of stone at the top so the toys wouldn't get wet or be blown away by the wind. And when this sculptor, a sculptor is a person who makes designs in stone. When this sculptor saw 
this basket, there were plants growing out of it. Can you see them there? And because of this, he thought, hmm, that's an interesting design. If I put them together like that, maybe I can invent a design for a column. Mm. And in fact, that's what is going on here. These are two columns that we have in Malta. One is Floriana, where the granaries are, and the other is in Rabat. And can you see at the top, this design is called the Corinthian design because this man was from Corinth. What a, what a complicated, yeah. what a complicated way to make a pillar. But the more complicated it is, the more it shows how good the artist is. Huh? All those scrolls and bits of, 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 of leaf there. And, and it's all from, from the nature. it's all from the various mm -hmm. breaches, yes, from the Akanthus. You can leaf. see the leaf there on the one yes. on the left, especially because the one on the right is rather eroded. Mm, yes. Okay, and of course, we have so many designs from nature, don't we? There are there, there's material curtains, tops. We draw patterns, and we even make those patterns in our pottery. These are two little dishes, ceramic dishes, and there's flowers all over, repeating flowers, and sorry about that, and uh, so many other artsy things that we create. And that brings us to the end of our feature today. These are the, all the people that we'd like to say a big thank you to for lending us their photos and uh, for all the footage as well. Yes, we also have some of those films there by these wonderful people here. And of course, big thank you to Stefania Papadobol from the office for her support. Now we come to the mystery object. What was it, Vic? Tell me, did they guess? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Most of them got it right. But we had some uh, interesting replies. One said koi fish. <laughs> it looks a bit like a koi. Ah, yeah. Yeah, the pattern on the koi fish. He has a bird's nest. Feathers of a bird. We had lots who, saw, who said uh, snake skin, and uh, one said a peregrine falcon. Oh. I think he's referring to the to the to, ah, the, to the breast feathers. To the breast feathers, yes. Oh, although there's not usually red on it. No. Uh -huh. um, but most got it right. And red, the answer and is, is ta -da. Yeah, it's the wing of a moth. Well, some said butterfly wings, but that's close yeah, enough. Yeah, that's close enough. Okay, this is a lovely, lovely day flying moth. It's called day flying because most moths fly at night. But and that's this, why they're brown, because you don't need color at night. Brown is gray and black, yes. But this guy, this one, likes to fly during the day, like butterflies. Okay, so that's why those nice uh, colors. And this is called the crimson speckled moth. Wow, beautiful. In Maltese, it's called zbeha. Zbeha, which means so, beautiful. It's so, so pretty, no? Do you know who got it first? What, mm, you, no, no, it was anonymous. Anonymous, yes. all right, no name. Okay, right. Last week, we also shared with you this photo for you to send us your ideas. What could they be saying, the bee and the chameleon? And they were had, we had a lot of answers this time, more than the one before, and we loved them all. And many were like this, but the words were put really nicely. And the bee is asking, did you have lunch? No. Why do you ask? And we loved this because, because of the why do you ask? Like, okay, coming, <laughs> it's obvious why she asks. And this was Mia, we don't know her surname, who goes to St. Dorothy's Slima. Thank you all of you who wrote in and uh, keep them coming. Here's the one for this week. We have two birds here, same species, same type. They are both Sardinian warblers, little birds that nest in our gardens. There's a female on the left, who has a speech bubble. She's talking, at least we're, we're imagining she's talking. And on the right is the male. The male has a darker black head and he's thinking. So he's got a think bubble. She's got a speech bubble or balloon. What do you think she's saying? And what do you think he's thinking? Creates, think, invent. You're an adult, you're a child. All of you, we'd love to hear your answers. We're going to we're going to put this link now after the program on Microsoft Teams, so you can click on it and send us your replies on the Google form as you did last week or as you're going to do now if you're new. 
This is our email address and uh, it's dinyawahda at birdlifemalta.org. And don't forget, we have also a Facebook page where we have fun things that you can do with your family. And I'm going to take you back to the presenter in a second. Okay, so that's us again. I was again. busy answering questions there. Yeah, <laughs> nice questions. Oh, yes, about insects, about birds, about uh, what they saw about the octopus. <clears throat> and I just published all the answers as well. <laughs> Good. Please keep them coming. Yes. We love your questions. We love your feedback. And if we don't manage to give you feedback during the program, we will. And if there are any program ideas, feature ideas that you think we're not taking up, we're thinking about them and we may include them, put them in uh, future features. OK, that's it. On right? behalf of BirdLife, we'd like to thank you for joining us and uh, see you next week. Bye. Bye. See you.